Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? We're drinking the Demeter's Fate uh, Russian Imperial Stout. Mm. Today we have another Patreon request. It is requested by It Came From The Nerd Cave. <laughs> you can follow them on Instagram. They would like us to cover 1977's Rituals, which is a Canadian movie. Yeah, that's right. This movie was directed by Peter Carter. This movie stars Hal Holbrook, and he was in John Carpenter's The Fog. Yeah. He was also in Creepshow. Lawrence Dane's also in this, and he was in Happy Birthday to Me. And Scanners, both in the same year. That's right. I think we covered Happy Birthday to Me. We Click did. the link above. Yeah. The movie starts off with five doctors, or surgeons, on vacation, basically. They're taking some time off on a bonding trip. Right from the get-go, there's sort of tensions already flaring up. The pilot turns around, the plane all takes a <laughs> nosedive. <laughs> Take a look at this, show the yeah. scar for surgery. <laughs> look at that. Look like somebody tried to pull your asshole out through your stomach. So they get there, and right away they start trudging through the forest. They're trying to not get their packs wet, yeah, and the, the camera's all the camera, 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 camera. <laughs> They finally make camp for the night, drinking, dancing around the fire, and chanting and everything. The next morning, they get up and our boots are gone. Where's our boots? Like, well, they're up where we left them. Like, no, they're not there. Somebody stole our boots. DJ, he gets mad at all of them. He's like, one of the things was for you guys to bring an extra pair of shoes. And he didn't do it. <laughs> DJ, he hikes to this dam that's up the river. Because he's got an extra pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. He leaves everybody else there to stay and to wait for him to get back. During the night, they kind of hear rustling in the woods, see a deer head that's been put on a spike. Sort of like a weird omen for them, right? The next morning, they decide they're not going to stick around anymore. Not with all this weird shit going on. They patch up their feet. They're wearing all these bags and yeah. everything and these <laughs> shitty socks. And they start hiking into the forest. They come across this big beehive that just gets thrown into their path. Roll down these hills and everything and get into this water to try and get away from the bees. They see Abel at the shore. His neck has been broken. One of them, they say that they saw possibly a figure up on the ridge that maybe threw them off. So they decide to keep moving forward and they've got to go through this river, this line that's been put between the two sides of the river and they figure out well, that's DJ's line. He used it to get across, follow his path. And they're taking this line and underneath the water and there's all these bear traps <laughs> underneath the water. And you're like, oh man, when is someone going to get it? And yeah. lo and behold, snap, no. Martin gets his leg caught in this bear trap. He's fucked, right? They're all doctors. They know how bad it is, right? And they got to reset the foot. How do you want your instep? <laughs> they set his foot in this scream that that guy makes is oh, horrible. Oh. Martin's out of commission. They got to build a stretcher for him. Now they got to carry him through the water and these rapids, <laughs> up these hills and these mountains. While somebody is out there. During this time, Harry and Mitzi start to get at each other's throats. Yeah. And all this shit from the past starts popping up. In the meantime, Martin is slowly dying. His foot's getting infected. And he's, they finally reach the top of this big mountain. And it's like, ah, oh, they don't even know how close they are to this dam. But I guess they're closer than they were before. They camp out. They don't even have, like, a tent or anything they're no. just sleeping out in the open they wake up in the morning and they look over and they see this head on this spike and they get closer and it's Abel's head is on this spike right in the ground <laughs> <laughs> and Harry's all ah! <laughs> throws the head off the, <laughs> off the side of the mountain <laughs> The whole head? Mitzi and Harry get into a big argument about what to do with Martin. Mitzi doesn't want to carry him anymore, and it's a big butting of heads. Carry Martin again. <laughs> Make it to the dam. They see the dam, and that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see what happens at the dam, keep watching Rituals, because it's a great, great ending. <laughs> yeah. This movie wouldn't be what it is without the actors. No. Like, let's get real here. These actors are fantastic for the roles they play. You feel the grittiness, right? And you feel the shit that they're going through. You feel the friendship, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that they also are butting heads. Mm. That's a hard thing to get across. Yeah, we're friends, but we also kind of don't get along. Right. But in the end, we're friends. <laughs> Hal Holbrook himself is great. Lawrence Dane is awesome, and I love the 
different personalities yeah. that lock heads. Yeah. It's perfect. And because they're such good actors, it makes this so much more believable. Even in the beginning when they're just chatting in the diner, having breakfast or whatever, it's like, ah, I believe them. And even like the bitching, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay, you can be really close friends. You're still going to have disagreements. Yeah. You're still going to bitch at each other. Yeah. It's reality. Which brings us to the character building is great. You know, it starts off, but you get a little bit of a glimpse of what their life is, their professional life. Mm -hmm. But as the movie progresses and they start butting heads, all this stuff from their personal lives now start to come out. Shit gets worse and they start opening up about all this garbage in the past. Brings out the worst in them, right? Yeah. But it also brings out the best. In the beginning of the movie, he seems sort of a bit of a distant asshole a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. But he starts to become more and more compassionate as the trip unfolds. Yeah, it opens up a bit more. The character arcs are great too. Mm -hmm. So not just character building, but character arcs. How you see them all change throughout the movie. From start to finish in the entire movie, that's a constant, is this moral debate, right? Yeah. That is the theme of the whole movie. What is right and what is wrong. Yeah. And it even transcends their characters and into their past, which they dredge up throughout the movie, yeah. right? Which is amazing! It's amazing how they managed to do that purely through dialogue. He starts off with them just talking in the diner about being doctors and what's right about the practice, what's wrong. Yeah. Is there a right or wrong? When Mitzi doesn't want to carry Martin anymore, we should make a run for it. He's done. He's a goner. He's not going to survive. We should save ourselves. And Harry, no, we should carry him. What is the right answer? Is yeah. there one? Yeah, you know? there really isn't. There really isn't. And I think that's what this movie is all about. There really isn't a right or wrong in this situation it's you just have to do what you gotta do yeah and really you have to work together it's about working together yeah, yeah. if that's maybe the the theme of it too right yeah. maybe a secondary theme it's that you gotta work together because if you don't you'll never get out of a situation like this by yeah. yourself yeah the setting of this movie of course is great and it's really cool how the setting changes they're plopped in the middle of this kind of forest so it starts with like a kind of a forest atmosphere then they make it to the water and it becomes more of like a rushing river is the setting yeah and then they get past that and they get to this forest that's all burnt out from a forest fire which is a great looking setting yep then they make it up to like the mountains and they're on these mountain tops in many ways the setting the, the backdrops for the movie are just as much of a killer yeah. as whoever's out there. Then they get to the dam, and the dam's another cool setting. Mm -hmm. And then there's another setting yet at the end of the movie that they make it to. Each setting also seems to bring out different aspects of their relationship yeah. too, it seems, yeah. right? Like, as the settings become more desolate, it starts to create more despair. It starts off, they're all happy, they're all alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's number one there. <laughs> and, they're, and they're in the forest with, you know, these nice vibrant trees. Everything's alive. There's mm -hmm. birds. And, and then as it progresses, they keep going to these settings. They're more dead. Yeah. You know, by the time they make it to that forest, it was all burnt out by a forest fire. It's like, it's desolate. Yeah. And they too have become like desolate. Yeah, they're sort of losing yeah. it more yeah. and more. The setting reflects what's happening to them. The effects and the kills in this movie are simple and basic, right? But they're so effective for the type of movie that this is. There's not many effects in this movie at all. Few that are there look spectacular. Yeah. Like the head on the stick. <laughs> it, it looks great. It's like, it looks like a real fucking dead head. Great effect where Someone, not going to mention who, gets their hand blown off with a fucking <laughs> shotgun. It looks like, whoa! Yeah. Like, and it's quick, too, and it's like, the guy's hand is fucking gone. There's another great effect when they actually reveal the killer, the way he looks is an effect and it looks really good. There's also an effect with fire too, yeah. which is done really well. And the kills too for this movie are great. A lot of it is behind the scenes. As a viewer, you don't even really know yourself, but right. it did happen and it scares the shit out of them and you're even more intrigued. A bit of comedy in this movie and it works. It's just there to kind of break the ice a little bit. You know, a lot of it, it comes from their banter. Boys being boys, talking shit. There's one part that really is funny where Mitzi and Harry start fighting in the river. <laughs> yeah. And they got Martin on that stretcher and they forget about Martin. It's like, oh, yeah, he's on the raft. Oh, 
<laughs> he's all kind of screwed up. And Going down this waterfall. <laughs> and then it just kind of cuts to them, like, with Martin again at night. So you don't know how they got him back. Yeah. But yeah. they got him yeah. back. <laughs> the mystery in this movie is great, too. Because at first, you're not even sure if there is a killer. These things are happening, but they could be by coincidence or accident. Or they could be by design. You don't know. Once you realize there is somebody out there after them, it's the motive of what he's doing is a good mystery. Like, mm. why is he doing this? And he leaves clues. He leaves x-rays behind yeah. of these botched surgeries yeah. and shit, right? Yeah. And them as surgeons, they're like, wow, who, who would have done a butcher job like this? Yeah. Like, who yeah. would have done this? This is terrible. They're kind of getting mad at whoever did this. Yeah. And maybe it was one of them right mm -hmm. you don't really know maybe don't this know. is a revenge story or yeah. something like that the lack of music for this movie is interesting because this movie doesn't really require it it's such a great atmosphere on its own done by the settings yeah. and the characters that work everything up around it that you don't miss music there's a little bit yeah there is a little a bit, bit of music here and there where there needs to be to kind of elevate things a bit you don't even notice it. It's just the tension in this movie. Yeah. You're so enthralled by what's going on. Music is yeah. incidental. Too much music could almost take you out of the setting. They want you to be sucked in. They want you to be there with these guys. Mm -hmm. and you, you, you are. You're there with them. Ending of this movie is great, too. We're not going to wreck it for you, but it's a terrific ending. Like It is fucking tense. And <laughs> the clock is ticking. A lot of people are... This movie's coined as a... The answer to deliverance yeah. or something the like Canadian that. The Canadian deliverance. Yeah, yeah, not deliverance at all. This movie's completely different. Besides the setting and there being a bunch of boys on a trip, there's it, not, it really is different. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's not much more that yeah. really is the same. Yeah. I think this movie is deeper than deliverance. Deliverance is a lot more face value. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because this one dives into this weird past that the characters have. Yeah. And Deliverance is really all in the moment. Yeah. And this yeah. movie is kind of more about... Not more about, but it really drudges up the past. It's more about them paying for their sins. Yeah. The cat and mouse thing is completely different. The dynamic between the characters is completely different than Deliverance. Yeah. Not even close, actually. If you want a really good horror thriller... It can almost be a slasher yeah. because there is a guy out there killing fucking people off. It may not be like stabby and gory, but it's kind of a slasher. Yeah, just before dawn comes yeah. to mind. Yeah, but way better. But like be way ten, better. Ten yeah. gazillion times better. <laughs> it is really a masterpiece. And it's Canadian. And it's Canadian. Totally check out Rituals. It's worth 100% of your time. Oh, yeah, for sure. You'll be sucked right in from yeah. the get-go. And until next time... Keep drinking.